Today we're going to be looking at a flash forge extruder plastic filament feeder mechanism. It's widely known that this mechanism has troubles reliably feeding uh, flexible filaments like NinjaFlex and some other uh, other brands of flexible filaments. Essentially what happens is there's a too much of a gap in between the drive gear and the plastic and if the filament goes too fast the filament will wind up in here and it'll just jam things up and just makes a big mess. There's some other designs out uh, on Thingiverse I checked out a long time ago and I think I printed out a couple and didn't have very good luck with them. Um, so several months ago I just kind of sat down for a day and just kind of worked out what I thought would be the, a nice solution to uh, make this a little bit better mechanism. So today we're going to show how to remove the stock pieces and then install a upgraded set of plastic. You're going to need uh, a 2 millimeter wrench. This is an Aeromax brand wrench with a, it's actually a machine tip. These are pretty nice wrenches. There's lots of them um, made for like RC car use and things like that. Um, this is a pretty good brand. It's nice design. Super light. Easy to use. It's just nice to have a good set of wrenches. This is 2 millimeter. You'll need a 2.5 millimeter wrench and may need a reamer to fix up a couple uh, holes if they didn't extrude quite right. And we're going to need a, a little bit bigger drill bit than the original hole was. This is I think 2.1 millimeters. And we're going to need a screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver for these little screws here. And you can't print this of course, but you're going to need one 10 millimeter long 3 millimeter thread, flathead, screw. This is stainless. You can use regular. A lot of people just have these laying around because they take another step off the printers or you can go to the hardware store. It's probably 30, 40 cents at a hardware store. Whatever. They kind of rip you off a little bit, but if you just need one, it's just easier to just go to the hardware store and get it. So let's start the disassembly process here. Take these screws out here, set them aside. These won't be used on the new plastic. Just take that off, and the spring should pop out. You will be using the spring. <coughs> that should loosen all this all these pieces up. Next we'll take this screw out. We won't be using that piece. And I'm not sure if this pops off. Yeah, we have to take this other main bolt off, main pivot bolt. Like that. We will be using this piece. It's a little uh, pivot bushing. And there's one last bolt. We'll take off this screw back here. We will be using this again. So we'll keep that. So we don't need that piece of plastic. We don't need this piece here. We will need the controller and bearing assembly here. And we won't be using this piece again. So this is what's left over. We'll be using all this for the new new setup. One thing you want to do while you have this apart is uh, check your drive gear. Make sure there's no little pieces or chunks. See if I have a razor blade around here. Yep, I've got a razor blade underneath here. So if you see any chunks of plastic go ahead and dig those out while we're at it. 
can use a hobby knife for this. Just kind of loosen things up a little bit. Stuff just gets impacted in here over time. It's kind of hard to see, but chunk there, chunk there. It's looking pretty good. Now we're going to remove this gear. I don't know what the heck you call this gear. Feeder gear, feeder sprocket, tooth something. We're going to install that back later. So on Thingiverse, I've had this out there for quite a while. It's been pretty popular downloaded. A pretty popular download. This is an up upgraded plastic I printed the other day. Um, I went through several versions of this to get everything right. I adjusted the, the spring cup here a little bit so it has the right tension. The first version I had, I thought, I thought it was just a little bit too tight. It dug into the filament a little bit too much. So I loosened things up just a little bit there. And just kind of made some other minor adjustments. Right now I think it's a pretty, pretty solid piece. So just, this just lays on here just like the other piece did stock piece and use the same screw. Drop that in. Depending on the uh, accuracy of your printer will make a difference on how this fits in your this hole. I enlarged this hole just a little bit in the design. I think it's like 4.1 millimeters. And I probably can go just a touch smaller but it's not super important for it to be to fit tight. It just has to be a nice pivot. So we'll put that in there. And this goes on top. It's kind of like the other plastic did, but there's less pieces. And it goes like that. So you have to kind of finagle this thing together. The spring gets pretty tight. Snap this together like this. Force that down like that. Make sure the spring's on there. And that's pretty much how that's done. It's kind of spring loaded to hold it from blowing up here. And we will put the main screw here. Main pivot to hold everything together. How that pivots. The last piece is uh, putting your pinch roller and bearing assembly back in. And we'll drop that in the back of it. It's kind of nice, there's less pieces, just kind of slide it in and cinch down the bolt, screw, whatever you call it. And that's it. That's how the plastic is installed. The heat sinks and things like that hold this together. There might be a, a little bit of a tolerance thing that needs to be. That brass bushing needs, may need to be sounded down just a little bit, but generally, once the film gets in there, I haven't had it pull apart or anything like that. It's pretty, pretty solid. See how this screw kind of juts out just a little bit. Probably need to take like 0.1 millimeters off the brass bushing, but. I printed this quite a bit and it hasn't been fine just, like, just as it is. The last thing we have to do is get the drive gear back in. <coughs> the drive gear just slides on like this. You want to release, release the pressure on the system here a little bit and let's put this on here. It's usually about right when it's flush with the end, maybe end just a little bit. To make sure the flat is pointed out this way. The reason the flat needs to be pointed out this way is because you can put your wrench behind here, the spring here, and tighten things back down. I 
There's actually one last thing that I forgot to do. So I'll pull this gear off here. You might forget to do it too, but it's pretty important. Oh, great. surgery on this thing to get this off. There. Take the pinch roller back off. <coughs> it should just fall off the back. One thing you want to do is I think before I showed the uh, 2.1 millimeter drill bit, you're going to take this. And the reason why I took the other drive gear off, you don't want to drive drill into that drive gear or that uh, the pinch roller. You don't want to mar it up or anything. So what we want to do is we just want to clean these holes out just a little bit, and make sure they're nice and straight, and don't have any extra plastic kind of oozed out and inside of these inside these holes. We'll just kind of use it as a reamer. Pull it out. And this should be a nice straight path for the filament to fly through. Then after that we can put our other pieces back on. Just like we did before. Just back in. Tighten the screw, which acts as the axle, like on the other piece. And there we have it. I'm going to your plastic there with for you. That's how it all fits together. In uh, practice, I was doing some. Uh, tests on this this feeder system and it's actually able to uh, run flex filament ninja flex through the system at 20 millimeters per second that's actually a raw filament speed not a extrusion speed so uh, and the filament didn't get wrapped up or anything like that it was just pouring out of the nozzle so it's way 20 millimeters per second on your filament speed is way faster than it'll ever run. It may run like five millimeters a second or something like that. It's not very, it's not very fast. But I've tested up to 20 millimeters per second, and uh, I think I went up to 50 just to see what would happen, and it did fail at 50 millimeters per second. But, uh, so somewhere in there between 20 and 50 millimeters per second, yeah, there's a failure point, but I don't think it's a uh, really necessary to know exactly when it fails. So that's how you uh, install the upgraded plastic. I'll put a link in uh, the description sometime so you can go download this piece and try to print it out. When you print it, um, this flat piece right here, you see a little bit of my slurry. I use some white slurry to hold it down. I print this towards the base the build plate and I use just a little bit of light support in here. It's not super necessary, just very small supports. And I have the other other stock pieces. Um, same here, this went to the build plate like this, and then this would print to the build plate like that. Very minimal supports needed. Um, a little bit through here. 
um, lights forward. And try to get about one millimeter away from the edge here. A um, little bit of support in this hole so it prints nice and round. Uh, probably not even needed in there, but I just left it in there. It breaks out pretty easily. And if there's any support trying to print inside these little holes, turn those off. Delete those supports and Simplify 3D or whatever you use. Try not to uh, have any supports inside these holes. They can just get hard to drill out. Uh, there shouldn't be any support in this one because it prints like this. So there won't be any support here. Um, there's a little bit of support on this lever handle here. Um, but that's about it. Sometime I'll sand this white slurry off. I didn't have any red slurry mixed up. Uh, so I just tossed some white down there because I knew I could just grind it off some sandpaper. Other than that, good luck with it. Have fun. And I'll make another video for some other things sometime. Thanks, bye.